Hi everyone, it's Andrea. Hello, how are you doing? Oh, I'm exhausted. Right, I'm here today with the second part of my February wrap up. So these are all the books I read in the second part of February. Not as many as I normally do in the end. I read 16 books in February all together. So there will be eight books in this one. So I'm going to start with the first book that I finished in the second half of February, which was Find Me from J.S. Munro. I'm not going to talk about this very much because I have posted a full review, which I will link down below. Needless to say, I really enjoyed this book and I do recommend you pick it up if you're into this sort of psychological thriller. Then I finally finished a book I had on the go for a while and they're falling all over the place again. See, this is planned planning. And that is Pat Barker's Regeneration. This follows some real people and it's based on true stories at, during the First World War. And basically it's events that happened at a hospital at Craig Lockhart in 1917 by a doctor named W. H. Rivers and a Siegfried Sassoon who is technically a pacifist. He, it's not that he's a pacifist, he just can see that the war is not doing any good, it's just killing men needlessly, and he doesn't want any part of it. We also meet other, fa other favourite and famous people in this book, like Wilfred Owens, who uh, Siegfried um, encourages to write poetry, and of course Wilfred Owens is a very famous war poet. Uh, it was a very, very interesting story. It's part one in a trilogy, um, which I didn't know when I bought it, but I will definitely be picking up parts two and three. I did give it four stars. I did enjoy it, and it was very heartrending because the World War One, very sad. The glorious dead, eh? And I think it is important to remember them. So yes, I will be picking up parts two and three as well, when I can. So then I read as part of the Stephen Kingathon, Mr. Mercedes. Now, Missy was going to listen to End of Watch, but she didn't because she didn't finish reading Finders Keepers, so she's listened to that one. I haven't read any of them, so I started with the first one. Totally different kind of Stephen King book because it's a thriller, not a horror. But I really, really in enjoyed the way it went. I enjoyed the plotline. I enjoyed the story. Very well written. I can see why this has been so highly regarded by the press and various people. I really enjoyed it anyway, and I think I gave it four stars. I think I gave pretty much every book four stars in the second half of Mother Part from one. Then I read a Kindle book, an ebook which I downloaded free from Cap from Amazon, not in exchange for a fair honest review, I will say, but just because it was on their free books and I always do that. And that was called A Ghostly Diversion, and I can't remember that name, I think his name was Paul Money or something along those lines. And this tells the story of a man who he moves into the countryside, up into, I think, Suffolk or somewhere along there. And he's driving to work one day, and there's major road work, so he takes a shortcut past an old abandoned cottage, and he gets this very strange feeling. But anyway, then he drives back that way because he wants to avoid the road works because it's taking him so long. And he gets a very strange feeling, but this time he sees a girl up in the bedroom. But that house is abandoned. It turns out this is the ghost of a girl who died in the 1950s and was never buried because her body was hidden. And it's the story of how this man can see this ghost and how he follows her instructions, finds her body and finally lays her to rest. I love this kind of story. I thought it was brilliantly written. I really, really enjoyed it. There will be another one. There is going to be a sequel to this book where he helps somebody else move on. I know this because of the way it ended. I really enjoyed it and I will be looking out for the next one and I'll probably buy it if I have to because I really enjoyed this one. That's what I do with Kindle books. If I find an author I really like, I will either buy future editions, um, you know, that aren't free, or I will actually buy them in paperback or hardback if they're available in a physical format. So yes, and then I read one of the books I got for Christmas, which is The Forgetting by Sharon Cameron. I am just going to say how much I love this cover again, because it's like stunning. And, and again, this has got mixed reviews, actually. I loved it. I couldn't put it down. I thought it was amazing. I thought, what a great idea. When you look at it, it obviously made sense, and you can figure out what's going to happen as it goes along with the author and I kind of like those books sometimes it's nice to have a shock and sometimes it's just nice to be able to figure it out yourself and this one was a figure it out yourself up to an extent and I really enjoyed it and again I gave it four out of five stars I will be reading this again if I ever have kids I will be saving it for them when they're old enough to read it they can read it too yes they can when you at the end 
Yay, only three more to go. The next one is Simon Koenig's The Witness. This only came out last year and I got it for 50p. 50p? I like that. Um, and basically this is the story of a woman who witnesses her lover being murdered and she's taken into witness well not into witness protection at this point but she's taken into a safe house because they think she's in danger because there's some sort of terrorist thing going on but all is not what it seems so a policeman is investigating all crimes and what happens and it turns out that Jane the witness is not all she seems again a brilliant book another four out of five star read from me now I go to my sad geeky place which none of you actually really know much about because I don't really buy books about this thing or I've got a few I can actually see I can see one two three four five kind of books relating to this particular thing and that is a Doctor Who book and that's Doctor Who the Clockwise Man by Justin Richards which is a spin-off book from the series from the first series and apparently this goes in between I can't remember anyway so it features the Doctor as played by Christopher Eccleston and, is, and Rose played by Billy Piper and basically it's the 1920s and yeah there's a mysterious murderer and there's aliens and there's clockwise cl clockwork people and what could go wrong? It's Doctor Who everything I loved it I do love Doctor Who I do have some very old annuals <clears throat> from like the 80s and the 70s not that I was around much in the 70s but I was born in the 70s but that I've bought second hand and I've got um, a big BBC book on Doctor Who which takes us right through to the McGann Doctor and doesn't go any further so it's the, the old series love it and I do like Doctor Who so I do get a bit nerdy when there's Doctor Who I, I like watching the series I do buy the DVDs but I don't go mad on it I don't buy all the knickknacks I got too many I got too much shit around anyway so I love that and I got this second hand for £2.50. No, sorry, £3.50. But I don't mind, it's a nice little book. I'll be picking up some more of these. See what they like. And the final book I read this month was the one that I picked from the TBR jar last month, which was Bristol in the 50s, or Muddling Through Bristol in the 50s, which is a series of essays from uh, reporters about what it was like to live in Bristol during the 1950s. Obviously it's post-war, there is still some rationing, there's a lot of shortages, there's a lot of bomb damage in the city, it was really hit quite badly. It tells us about what entertainment was like, so where they went dancing, cinemas, theatre, sports, the different sports clubs, um, what the planners did to the city which was atrocious, there was no real planning, they just knocked anything down to build new, and new was like 50s and 60s style tower blocks. Horrible, horrible, we don't like them! Um, yeah and all things like that and about planes and about how Bristol recovered from the war. I did enjoy it but I only gave it two out of five stars and the reason is that although I enjoyed it I wanted more personal insights about what it was to like to be in the 50s in Bristol. For instance the stories that my mum and dad tell from when they were growing up about how they used to go dancing at the Glen there's a little bit about that in there but there's so much more character in it because it's personalised. They used to go to the Glen and they used to... My dad got thrown out of the Glen for fighting by David Prowse, who was the man in the Darth Vader suit, because David Prowse is from Bristol. And they used to go temping bowling with him and playing bowling with him, and his feet were so big and he had corns so we couldn't wear the shoes, and he would bowl barefoot. So things like that, those are the stories I really wanted to read in this. I was a bit disappointed. But there you go. Not to say that if you're interested in Bristol in the 50s, it's very, very interesting. So, those are the rest of the books that I read in February and now it's March so another month of reading begins so I hope you enjoyed this if you've read any of the books I've mentioned leave me a comment I will be watching your wrap-up season when I can I don't have a lot of time at the moment because I've got so many books to read for review but I do sort of watch them in bed at night when I'm lying in bed and I'm watching the videos with the headphones on trying to to get through them and watch your wrap-ups I love seeing what you think of books so I will be doing that I've subscribed to a load more people as well recently so I'm really looking forward to going through their back feed because I do like to read the back feed as well so I will see you very very soon because I've got loads more videos planned lots to do 
there will be a haul at some point, but it will be a very small haul because I'm not buying much in March unless I go to Book Barn and then it will be massive, but that will be a separate book haul from the normal book haul. You see what I mean about the books? The books just keep coming! I'll insert a picture here of my TBR pile and that's just some of it. I actually have seven piles of books on my TBR. I'll see you soon booktube. Bye now!